Well, let's say you have plans to drive from Boston to Bar Harbor for the weekend. That's 265 miles each way. Now, what if we told you how to do it on a single tank of gas? One tank of what, you'd probably say? Well, Ted Reinstein has the answer to that question. But first, he checks out the buzz on the latest in eco-friendly motoring, the hybrid car. They may have split personalities, but there are more and more of them loose on our streets. Hybrids. I defy anybody to get into these today and tell you whether you're operating on the internal combustion engine or the battery. John Lawler is an automotive expert and a technical advisor to NPR's Click and Clack. He says earlier hybrids, which combine gasoline and electrical power, could be a little weird. What was disconcerting originally was when you roll to a light, everything would completely quit uh, in, in the battery cars. The, uh, the battery cars would completely quit like a golf cart. Other than a few odd gauges that tell you when the electric power is kicking in or recharging, you won't notice anything different about driving this Honda Hybrid. Oh, except maybe the 50 plus miles you'll get to the gallon. There really aren't any drawbacks. I don't see a downside. But there are other ways to wean the American driver off of dependence on foreign oil. We heard about it online. A lot of other people are into it, and they got us hooked, and, you know, we've been trying to hook other people. Stephanie LaFond is part of the Biodiesel Underground, a group of Volkswagen TDI owners who are spearheading the switch from regular diesel fuel to biodiesel. I don't see why anyone who could wouldn't use biodiesel. So, you know, it, it, just, makes so, it just makes sense on just about every level. Nate Burns got so pumped on biodiesel, he started the New England Biodiesel Initiative to help raise awareness of this soybean-based fuel. He had been on what he calls dino fuel, petroleum-based diesel. And then I learned about biodiesel, and I tried it, and the car loved it, and it's, and it's good for the car, it's good for the environment, it's good for the economy, it's good for our energy independence and our national security. I, I don't see how I could not use it. Burns and his TDI group of bioheads helped convince Burke Fuel of Chelsea to put it in a pump. It's taken off, it's gangbusters. It's been, uh, it's taken off much faster and much larger than we thought it would. Burke's pump is B20, or 20% biodiesel. But the hardcore get Burke's fuel to deliver 100% biodiesel to their homes. And no need to fret if your tank spilleth over. Uh, oh, I guess I'm full. Don't need to call the EPA or anything. We'll just, uh, just it's vegetable oil, it's salad dressing. You know, it's like if, it's like if you were you know, walking around eating a salad and you just build some, it's, it's no big deal. Unfortunately, salad dressing is currently more costly than conventional diesel. But Mark Meachin of Cambridge says that's not the true measure of biodiesel. On, on a single tank of gas, I've gone from Boston up to Bar Harbor, spent the whole weekend driving around, and drove all the way back. He says 700 miles to the tank gives biodiesel the edge. If you talk about it as a per gallon cost, most people are, are startled to hear that it's over $2 a gallon. But if you ask how much does it cost you to drive a thousand miles, then the equation changes because I always win. <laughs> and biodiesel drivers get an aromatic bonus. As the soy based fuel heats up, it gives off a delicate bouquet. What it reminds me of is old school popcorn machines at the movie theaters. I'd heard it would smell like french fries or something like that. Uh, I think it just smells like something buttery. <laughs> Actually, uh, french fries you can really smell. It smells like spud. And uh, fish you can really smell. Actually, there's a good reason Mark Nitzberg's Mercedes often smells like your local restaurant. I only need a couple of gallons. That's because that's where he tanks up. What usually cooks in here? Um, like a vegetable, tempura. Nitzberg's Mercedes is a grease mobile. It runs on waste oil from restaurants. Today, he sweet talked his way into the Friolator at Jasmine and Kendall Bar, a Thai restaurant in Cambridge. Ah, so you know when the car runs, the exhaust will smell a little bit like tempura. The great thing about used cooking oil is that you're burning garbage. Nitzberg purchased a grease car kit and installed a separate tank and fuel line. 
His car starts up on conventional diesel, then switches over to the vegetable oil as it warms up. His Mercedes seems to have developed quite a taste for other people's grease. In fact, it's better for the engine. There's less um, dirt in, in filtered vegetable oil than there is in, in uh, diesel. So uh, it should make the engine last longer and the environment last longer. Nitzberg is seriously pumped up about his grease mobile, but he's well aware of how the whole idea sounds to people and smells. It's pretty funny. Um, it just sounds like a joke, and, and I kind of feel like, uh, sometimes I kind of feel like I'm driving a joke. Well, maybe a movement as time has come, Mary. We'll There's see. There's a lot of different options out there. I think the hybrid cars sound especially interesting to a lot of people, about 50 miles to the gallon. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's mm -hmm. incredible. Uh, interestingly, Arianna Huffington, the conservative commentator, is launching an attack on SUVs, getting back mm -hmm. to the SUVs next month. She herself turned in her Lincoln Navigator for a hybrid vehicle. She said after 9-11, it all came together for her. It all made sense that uh, she didn't want to be uh, worried about oil and where it was coming from, well, so she went with a hybrid. It's, it's not just the folks in Cambridge who have been ticketing, including a member of my family who got <laughs> nailed with a beat-up old bravado. No, no. <laughs> nailed. Still to come, Ted takes on the T-Bird.